talking about putting the person back into personalization. Nice. Using insight to power up a data strategy. It's Tristan Finley from Toluna and Sarah Gale from Global. So please put your hands together and welcome to the stage. Can you hear me? Yeah, good. Uh, good morning, everyone. I hope you're looking forward to a really energizing, inspirational couple of days. I'm not just saying this, but it was one of my favorite events last year. So I'm looking forward to getting this out of the way, relaxing, and then hopefully hearing some great inspirational talks. Um, quick introduction, Sam just did it. I'm Tristan, I head up the tech, media, and entertainment team at Toluna, and I'm joined on stage by the wonderful Sarah, who heads up the research team at Global. Um, we wanted to be like slightly controversial. Um, yes, this is a data track, but actually we wanted to talk about people. Um, as a researcher and psychologist, I'm probably more uh, inspired by people than data sometimes. So we wanted to ensure that organizations are putting human insight at the forefront of their data strategies. And we think we've been hopefully doing that quite well over the past three years uh, between Saluna and, Glo and Global. So I'll hand over to Sarah, um, who will take you through a bit of this journey. Brilliant. Thank you, Tristan. Oh, I'm not sure my mic's kicked in yet. I'm not keen on the lectern not being here. I can't hide. Um, <laughs> anyway, moving on. And my hand's going to go immediately into my pocket. Um, we can't escape data, right? It's everywhere. Um, working in media, everything we hear about is data. Everyone's got data in their job title. Um, data is coming out of every or orifice. Um, and some work we've been doing with Omnicom, looking at the the future of, of advertising really nicely demonstrates this because we've moved from a time in 2018 where about just over 40% of um, media spend was traded on addressable platforms or platforms with addressable capabilities. If we fast forward to 2034, the prediction is that this will be 91%. So nine out of 10 pounds we traded on platforms that have addressable capabilities and therefore data attached. So we can see why data is absolutely everywhere. And at Global, we're no stranger to this. We have, like everyone else, been building up our, our data capabilities with our connected listening data um, and making sure that we're fit for the future. And we have all those beautiful signals and audiences and segments to target on. Um, and it's brilliant because it offers us more efficient targeting, more precise targeting, more accountable targeting, all those amazing kinds of utilities um, that, that trading on data signals can get us and planning on data signals can get us. But we think it's really important that we don't forget that actually advertising is about people. The one thing all advertising has in common is it's about connecting with people. And people are weird. They don't always behave how you expect them to behave. They're slightly unpredictable. They're not diverse. We can do the same thing as someone else, but for an entirely different reason. And actually, we think it's really important that we understand people and why they do what they do, as well as understanding behaviors in order to create advertising that actually goes back to those really traditional tenets of um, planning that reaches the right person at the right time with the right message. Thanks, Sarah. And I, I guess that's where, that's where Toluna um, comes in. So Sarah's going to talk shortly about Workshop and Play, which is their internal branded, I guess let's call it insight platform, agile insight platform. And all of that is built around our research tech stack, which we call, we call Toluna Start. Um, I'm going to talk about this in the context of how Global use it, but it's basically the same as how, how any of our clients use it. But what it's provided for Global is a single unified platform where all of their consumer insight is stored, right? So any of Sarah or her team can log into the platform, see what has happened, what is happening. They can then create their own survey. They can create a quant survey, a qual survey. Uh, they can do that in quite an easy manner. They can use a survey they've built before. They can create a new one. They can pull in questions they've used before or segmentations they've used before. There's nothing particularly special about that. I'm biased. I think it's a great tech stack. It's UX is good. But ultimately, the difference and I think the impact it's had on global and the actionability of the data is then by the people that they actually target as part of that research. I think it's fair to say that a lot of historical communities and a lot of the work that you and the team were doing before was giving you great answers, but the people giving you those answers probably weren't actually the people that you wanted to get answers from, very skewed towards certain demographics or certain genders. So actually what the, team, what the team can do through the platform is not just build a survey, 
build the questionnaire, but actually then target the people that they actually need to get an answer from to drive the strategy that Sarah has been talking about and we'll cover on the following slides. And then, of course, the back end, the ability to analyse and share those results. The talk just before talked about the, the ease at which we need to now not just get the insight, but actually be able to share it and tell a story from it. Um, and that's something that's incredibly intuitive through the platform. What does that mean for the team? It means that someone in Sarah's team could have a question put to them this morning about an initiative that someone wants to run uh, with Amanda Holden on Heart Breakfast tomorrow. Someone in the team could simply go in, launch a survey, have an answer that day, and that could directly influence something that is then done on Heart Breakfast tomorrow morning, which the team have actually done. That's not a made-up made example. We were quite shocked by the numbers. Um, I asked someone in the team to pull the numbers from the below, but it really shows the strength of this partnership over what's just three years. Um, the team have run over 500 projects, about three and a half a week. They've spoken to over 314,000 people. We've asked nearly 20,000 questions. And the last one, kind of in many ways, this is probably one of the most important in terms of the partnership. We've onboarded about 33 people at Global. So what that means is we're quite far removed. Like the team can literally do this themselves, bring us in when they need some support or have some questions, but actually your team are completely empowered to drive and own your whole research strategy here because of what the platform um, offers, I hope. <laughs> no. No, absolutely. <laughs> so, as Tristan said, well, that, Taluna forms a really big part of, of our research offering. And we use it for our own brands and we use it to understand our own audiences. But we also use it to actually power data strategy for our clients and agencies. So we've branded it Workshop Play. So we have a whole product that, so people know what to ask for. They know to ask for something on Workshop Play. And what, that, what Workshop Play allows us to do, as, as Tristan said, is go to people and ask them questions. It allows us to do qual. It allows us to really quickly answer any questions about um, behaviours, about uh, motivations, about mood, about all those things that come up. And we, we do all of this stuff, as, as Tristan said, and I was amazed about how much we actually do. We're very nosy. Um, every day we're kind of asking these questions, going out. And we do a lot, as I said, for our own brands, but we also do work to try and um, superpower up our, our data strategy. So going back to what we were talking about in the beginning, we have brilliant data signals. We understand how to connect with people, but actually what going back and talking to people allows us to do is supercharge that data strategy by, under, by understanding the why behind the what. And what I'm going to do is just talk you through a few examples of that today. So the first thing we do on Workshop Play that is brilliant is our understand cultural trends using what we call Audience Insider. Now, on this, we talk to 250 people every week of the year, um, and it's been running for three years. And we cover things like mood and motivation and behaviours. Um, it allows us to split by any audience, and it allows us to trend. Now, a really good example of how we use this, I was working on something um, a couple of weeks ago for a broadband supplier, and we were trying to target people that switch broadband. And if you go to your data strategy, um, you can find signals for people that are interested in switching broadband based on whether they've tested their internet speed, all of those kind of things. Um, but actually, we wanted to understand a bit more about why people might want to switch broadband. And what uh, using Audience Insider allowed us to do was correlate interest in switching utilities or consideration for switching utilities with mood, with what people were going through, how they felt. And actually, we found a really high correlation between uh, consideration for switching utilities, which is the green line on here, and concern about the cost of living. So actually, there's a big segment out there that are thinking about switching broadband because they're worried about costs. However, there are also big correlations between people who want to get fit, <coughs> who want to move house, who are doing DIY. So people in a change mindset, people who want to change um, their lives are also open to switching utilities or broadband and changing that. There are also people who just want to win. They just want the, the best deal. And actually what this allows us to do is, is take that switching broadband brief and try and predict who is going to come into market based on how they feel, based on all of these other things, and open up all of those data signals so we're not just backwards looking based on what people have done. 
we're forwards looking based on how they feel and those motivations. And linked to that, we also work um, a lot with category entry points. So anyone that knows Byron Sharp's work on how brands grow, brands grow by growing mental availability. Mental avail availability grows if you attach your brand to a category entry point or a trigger into market. Now that's all brilliant, but actually when you start to look into it, nobody really knows what the triggers into market are, how big they are, and who is going to experience those triggers. So. What we do is we try and look around by exploring category entry points and asking people what triggers into market there are, how big they are, when do they occur, how do they occur. And it enables us to actually help our clients grow their brands by growing that mental availability because we understand what messages to give on what trigger. Because we're out of market for most categories for 95% of the time, right? So we can go pointy and we can go right on that intention and right on that decision point. But actually, what's really helpful sometimes is to take a step back and try and get people before they get to that because we're only in that state for 5% of the time. And we can then overlay all of that, not just talking about triggers, but talking about the entire consumer journey. So when we're looking at our outdoor properties, we have lots of digital estate outdoor. And actually, we can change messages depending on the time of day. So when people are traveling around, what mindset they're in? Should we be showing different ads in the morning compared to the evening? All of this understanding helps us to build campaigns for our clients that, that really resonate. And it wouldn't be a media conference without a Rory Sutherland quote. Um, hopefully, that's given you some understanding of how we use insight and um, <coughs> insight about people to supercharge our data strategies and, and take it that one step further, looking beyond the obvious and, and trying to create campaigns that, that really resonate. Thank you. And then just to close, we thought we couldn't really attend the future of media conference without talking about the future um, and sort of this partnership. Do we know what's going to happen? No. Um, what, and uh, this ties into the previous talk as well. I think what we really value is kind of it doesn't feel like a supplier agency relationship. We have a brutal honesty across the, the partnership, which can sometimes be tough, but ultimately it gets us, it gets us results. And I think that's why we've ended up on such a journey over the past three years. Um, probably the area, we're not going to go into it now, but the area that tied in with, with what Sarah was talking about, understanding where people are going to them, what they might be listening to, to what we can target them with, the data matching area is probably one that's really exciting us over the next 12 months. I know that's a, that's a big focus for both of our organisations. So we're quite excited about um, opportunities there as well. But that's all we had to cover today. Um, hopefully it was uh, interesting and useful for you guys. Do we want, we're not, we didn't plan on doing a Q&A. We've got two minutes. Have I put us on the spot? Oh, Sorry, Tristan, Sarah. Tristan, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> no. No? Right, thank, thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>